Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us implement a stack. If you don't know what a stack is, click on the i button at the top right corner of the video for the link to the video on stack where I have explained what a stack is along with all its operations. The link for the conceptual video can also be found down below in the description section of this video. So let us start implementing a stack in this video. So first, let us create a class stack and let us make use of the array implementation of stack that we had discussed in the conceptual video of stack. So let me zoom this up public class stack now the very first step is to create an array and let's name it as data let us make this as a private variable so that the end user cannot access it from outside the class so private int data next we need a variable that represents the top of the stack so let's name it as top so private int top and let us use an initial value of minus one now the value of minus 1 here means that currently the stack is empty. We are having nothing on the stack at the moment. Next let us define the constructor function for the stack and this will run implicitly once a new instance of the stack gets created. So public stack and let us pass a capacity to this so int capacity so as to define the size of the array that describes the stack so this dot data so this here refers to the stack instance that we are currently working on. And for that we are defining the array data and let us dynamically allocate it by using the new keyword so new int and pass on the capacity to this. Now let us define one more constructor function and this will not take any arguments so public stack but if the end user doesn't specify any capacity of the stack while creating a new instance of the stack then this constructor will run and let us make sure that this gives us an array of size 5 for our stack so we can say this which refers to the current instance that we are working on and then in order to run the other constructor function that we defined right here let us give this a capacity value of 5 which is the default capacity like this now let us first define some basic methods for the stack like finding the top of the stack so right here let us create a function and let's name it as get top and this will return the element that is sitting at the top of the stack so the very first thing we need to do is to check the underflow case we discussed underflow case in detail in the conceptual video on stack so don't forget to check that video if you need a refresher on this so to check for underflow we can say if this dot top is minus one that is if the top of the stack has a value of minus one then that means we are having an empty stack and for an empty stack we have nothing sitting on the top of the stack so we can simply return minus one and come out of the function so let us give a message here underflow and let us return minus one next if we do have something on the top of the stack let us access the element that is pointed by the top so for that let us say int value this dot data this dot top so this dot top represents the index at which the top element of the stack is sitting in the array because here we are making use of the array implementation of the stack so this entire thing gives us the top element of the stack and here we are storing it in a variable called value so now let us return the value from here so let us understand this entire method by taking an example now let us consider this stack now you can see this stack is an empty stack for which top is minus one so if the top of the stack is minus one then this code will run which says underflow and returns as a value of minus one and if we do have some elements on the stack say one two and three and top in this case is pointing at this location so here what we are doing is we are saying this dot data which represents the array in which we are maintaining the stack so we are getting this value in a value variable and we are putting it right there and then returning it from the function get top so this was a very simple implementation for the get top function now let us move forward and implement the pop method for our stack so from the conceptual video we know that pop is used to remove the element that is sitting on the top of the stack so let us achieve this by creating a function for pop function to pop an element from the stack so public int pop now the very first step here is to check the underflow case if there is nothing on the top of the stack definitely we cannot perform the pop operation in that case because we don't have sufficient elements to perform the operation so if this dot top is minus one which represents the empty stack case so for this let us create a log to the terminal stating underflow so system dot out dot print line 
underflow and let us return a value of minus 1. Now if we do have some element sitting on the top of the stack, we can access it and let's store the element that we get in a variable and let's name it as element. So we can say this dot data and this dot top like this. So here we are referring the element that is being pointed to by top in our array this dot data. We are storing the value that we get inside the element variable. So now we have stored the value of what was there on the top of the stack in a separate variable which is element in this case. Let us set the current top of the stack to zero by saying this. Now next step is to remove the current value that we have on the top of the stack. So in order to achieve this we just have to do one simple thing and that is to decrement the top variable by one. So this dot top minus minus. So now we have a new top for our stack because the earlier top of the stack was successfully removed. Lastly let us return the element that was popped. So return element. And let us understand the pop functionality by using an example. Now let us first understand this if condition. So if the top of the stack is minus 1 which is true for an empty stack then we will print underflow and return a value of minus 1. Otherwise if the top of the stack is not minus 1 we are having more elements in the stack. So let us get the element that is sitting on the top of the stack say this one. So the element that is sitting on the top of the stack in this case is 3. So we can store that in a variable element as per line 27. So here comes 3 and then we set the element that is sitting at the top of the stack to 0. Currently we are having 3 and we have already copied the value that was on the top of the stack in this element variable. So now we can set this to 0 as per line 28 and then let us decrement the top of the stack by 1. So top of the stack comes here. And then we can return this element variable from the function. So this is how our pop functionality works for a stack. Now before testing the entire functionality let us complete all our methods and then we will try our code at last. Let us define a push method that will push an element to the top of the stack. This will take some value that we want to add on the top of the stack. So public void push. This takes on some element and the very first step here is to check for overflow condition and not for underflow. We don't need to check for underflow condition because we can always add an element in an empty stack as well. So the condition for overflow is when the top of the stack becomes equal to the index of the last element of the array which in this case is the top element of the stack. So if this dot top becomes equals to this dot data dot length minus one. So if this is the case then we cannot add any more elements to the stack because the stack is already full. So let's leave a message stating overflow and just return from the function like this. Next if our stack is not already completely full that is it is partially full or empty then we can increment the top of the stack so that the top points to some empty location in our stack. So this dot top plus plus and then at that empty location we can fill in a value right. So this dot data this dot top and let us set this to element. So now let us understand this with the help of yet another example. So let me clear the canvas first and take a fresh example. So let us say our stack is 1 2 and 3 and say the capacity of our stack is also 3. That is the size of the stack is 3 and we are using our implementation of the stack. So let us use the indexing 0 1 2 and also the top of the stack is this. So if this dot top that is if the top of the stack is this dot data dot length minus 1. So top is pointing to this element which is sitting at index 2. So if top matches this dot data dot length minus 1 which is 3 minus 1. So if top is 2 for this case then it's overflow because now our stack is completely full and we cannot add any more elements to the stack right. So we can simply return from the function without doing anything. Now consider this stack 1 2 3 and let us say this has a capacity of 5 and we are still left with two slots that can be filled. So for this stack the if condition will not run we come to line number 37. Currently the element that is sitting on the top of the stack is 3. So now the very first step is to increment the top 
by one so top comes here and then whatever value is passed to our push function we can add it right here so let us say the end user passed a value of 4 so 4 will come right here and the push operation is now done let us say we have one more value that the user provided us but for that we will first check this condition which doesn't hold true the next step is to increment the top by one so top comes right here and now we need to add the element that the user supplied us to the location that is being pointed by the top pointer so 5 and now if we try to add one more element to the stack then this will not work because now top is equals to this dot data dot length minus 1 that is we have no more space for new elements on our stack so we can simply print overflow in that case and simply return from the function right so now we are done with some of the main methods let us define two more methods one for checking the emptiness of the stack and the other one to display the entire stack so public boolean is empty so to check whether the stack is empty or not we need to know the size of the stack so for that let us define a function and let's name it as size so public int size and return this dot top plus one so the size of the stack is equal to this dot top plus one so let's understand this so here you can see the size of our stack is three we are having three elements in the stack and the top is pointing at this location which is represented by index 2 so top is 2 if we add 1 to 2 we get 3 and 3 is also the size of our stack now coming back to the is empty function if the stack is empty let us return true so if this dot size is 0 return true else return false so if this dot size is 0 then our stack is empty right now lastly before trying our code let us create a function for displaying the elements of the stack so for printing the elements of the stack what we will do is so consider this stack if we want to print the elements of this stack we'll start from top and go till index 0 and print each element one by one using a for loop right so let us see how we can achieve this so first we will print 5 then we will print 4 then we will print 3 2 then 1 so the order in which we pushed the elements into the stack the printing order will be exactly the reverse of that so let us define a function display so public void display so for this we need a for loop that goes from top to index 0 for integer i as this dot top i greater equals 0 i minus minus system dot out dot print line this dot data i and let us give some space this should be print now once we are done printing the elements of the stack let us leave a line by saying system dot out dot print line so now let us finally write our main function and see all the above methods in action let us create a stack using the new keyword this will create a new instance of the stack for which we will have the data array so stack stack new stack and here we are not specifying any capacity so by default we will take capacity as 5 let us add an element to the stack so stack dot push 3 stack dot push 2 stack dot push 1 let us print the stack by saying stack dot display and now let us compile our code and run the file so in order to compile the code let us say java c stack dot java now for running the file java stack so you can see we are getting 1 2 3 as the result and one here being the top of the stack because one was the last element to make into the stack so it will be the very first element to get printed right now let us check the overflow case for push operation so stack dot push two stack dot push three and let us try to do one more push operation and now let us run the file to see what we get so java c stack dot java and java stack so here you can see we are getting overflow being locked to the terminal because we are already having five elements in the stack now we are trying to add one more element to the stack that has a capacity of five so this will lead to overflow condition right so let me remove these three push operations and now let us see the pop operation in action so stack dot pop stack dot pop and say stack dot display so let us compile the code and run the file so java c stack dot java and java stack so here you can see we are now having only three in our stack because we performed two pop operations and first one was popped from the stack because it was the last element that made into the stack then two got popped from the stack and now we are only left with three in our stack 
So that is why 3 is getting locked to the terminal, right? Now let us check for the underflow case as well. So stack.pop, stack.pop. So let us run the file. And you can see we are now getting underflow. Because currently in the stack we are having 3, we performed a pop operation. So 3 got removed from the stack and the stack becomes empty. Then at line 70 we are trying to perform another pop operation from an empty stack and this leads to the log underflow, right? So let us comment this out and even this one and let us try our other methods. So let us print the stack size, so stack dot size. Let us check whether our stack is empty or not. So stack dot is empty. So let's compile the code and run the file. So you can see the stack size is 2 because now we are having only 2 elements in the stack 2 and 3 where 2 is the top of the stack. So in order to verify the top of the stack let us say stack dot get top and let us run the file. So you can see we are getting 2 as the result because 2 is sitting on the top of the stack and for is empty the stack is not empty because we are having 2 elements in the stack. So this was all I wanted to cover about the implementation of stack. If you liked the video do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more such videos and I will see you guys in the very next one.